this episode, we're going to be taking an application that is hosted on Heroku, and then we're going to be moving it to an application that's hosted on DigitalOcean. So we're going to be doing a full migration of data. So backing up our data from Heroku and then uploading it into the DigitalOcean database. And we're also going to be using Kamal to set up the deployment. And during the provisioning of the servers, we're also going to lock things down to make that box a bit more secure. And so to get started, we're going to have a look at what we have on Heroku. We have one application and it's pretty simple. We just have a Postgres database and then we have our Rails application. There's not too many moving parts. And your application may vary, but really the database is going to be one of the biggest gotchas because that's not always as clear on how you're going to migrate that. So as a forewarning, there will be downtime with this migration. And it's something that you would have to either plan for or communicate with the organization or the users that this migration is happening. You don't want to just take the system down for a period of time without anyone knowing, unless if it's a free hobby project that you are working on. But anything where people are paying you or you're doing it for an organization, communication is going to be very important. So to get started, I'm going to delete everything that I have in DigitalOcean just so we are starting fresh. And I think before you do a migration like this, it's really important to discuss why you need to migrate infrastructures. There's several reasons why you may want to do it. Heroku may be getting way too expensive and you're able to get cheaper alternatives elsewhere. In this case, with using DigitalOcean, it's not exactly going to be cheaper than the very basic plan that Heroku offers. However, as soon as you start needing more servers or you need to scale vertically, it can get pretty expensive very fast in Heroku. And this episode isn't limited to just DigitalOcean. You would be able to apply a lot of the same stuff to AWS or Google Cloud Platform or to a private server that you have hosted somewhere or even something like Hetzner. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.